Adam Sandler and Netflix are back with another movie exclusive right on the streaming platform. This one's called, You Are So Not Invited to My Bat Mitzvah. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's going to be great. Let's talk about it. I'm trying not to give away the game in the introduction to this video review because I've been told by several people over the years that Adam, you can't tell people if it's good or not right away. You need to lead them into the video further so you get the engagement up. And so you don't have people clicking away because they're angry that you didn't like something they did or you love something that they didn't. Go ahead and subscribe to Adam Does Movies for milk toast thoughts that are neither good nor bad. There's gonna be pros, there's gonna be cons, but I'm gonna be walking that tightrope, baby. I'm not gonna be giving you an opinion one way or another. Okay, this movie sucks ass. What could possibly be worse in 2023 than an Adam Sandler comedy? How about an Adam Sandler comedy that primarily focuses on his daughters in real life? We got Sadie Sandler in this. We got Sonny Sandler in this. We got about three minutes of Adam Sandler in this. If nepotism needed a film title, it would be You Are So Not Invited to My Bat Mitzvah. This movie is really a celebration of Adam Sandler's friends and family. I know it's always kind of been that for Happy Madison Productions, but at least for the most part, Sandler's friends were comedians, they were naturally gifted, they were very funny, uh, and then there was also Rob Schneider. So it kind of, you know, gave us a little bit of everything, and we will always be appreciative, or at least I will, of early Sandler Productions. Happy Gilmore is still in my top five comedies of all time. Billy Madison is a damn classic. Hell, I loved Adam Sandler when he put out those albums, those CDs, like, they're all gonna laugh at you! And it had Fatty McGee, and it had Toll Booth Willie. There was some good shit on those. And then he kind of lost me after seven or eight pretty solid films. And it's just been crap after crap for decades, with an occasional uncut gem hidden amongst them all. But we are at the absolute bottom of the barrel with this one. This story focuses on Stacy and Lydia. Stacy, played by Sandler's daughter, she's the better of the two in this picture, but uh, there's no comedy coming out, all right? This is, this is teen dramedy. It's very much going for a young girl audience, I would say in the, the tween years, but my 14-year-old daughter had no interest in this movie. I also watched it with my wife, she didn't laugh once, and she is a lot easier to please on the comedy side of things than I am. I believe this is based on a book, probably a lot better than the garbage that this thing was, and before someone says, inevitably, Adam, this movie wasn't made for you. It, it's, it's made for teenage girls. Okay, well, you know what? I like Mean Girls. Was that not made for me? Because I certainly thought it was hilarious, and Tina Fey is an absolute legend in my eyes, and one of the funniest female comedians out there today. There's not a funny female comedian in this movie. There's a teacher that shows up later. She's kind of supposed to be zany. She has a bizarre haircut. She's trying her damnedest, but the words that are coming out of her mouth have zero comedy to them. There's no punch to anything. It goes like half in on an idea and then it pulls away because it doesn't want to offend or something. I don't even know. But this is some lame ass shit. And all I kept thinking when she was out there is, was Jane Lynch not available? Because she would have knocked it out of the park. And that's the difference between some of these comedians. Jane Lynch can just enter a room and elicit a laugh from people because she has that presence, that energy, that excitement that, that's just so funny about her. Hell, Zoe Deschanel would have knocked that role out of the park. And this teacher is in it a lot for some reason. I, I don't know what was going on, but this whole movie is a complete shit show. The premise is very simple. Stacy and Lydia are getting ready for their bat mitzvah. This year they become women. Right now they're in that awkward early Britney Spears phase. They're not girls, but not yet women. I'm not a girl. Not yet a woman. Everything's all planned out. They're gonna have these extravagant, expensive parties because everyone in Hollywood is rich. So now every movie has a bunch of rich characters in it that like 3% of the population can recognize and appreciate and relate to. I am really getting sick of all these comedies where people have multi-million dollar houses, they drive like six expensive cars, 
and yet we're supposed to feel bad because they can't maybe buy a dress for their daughter that probably costs more than my mortgage every month. In fact, there's a joke in the movie where Stacy's mom, who's played by Adina Menzel, Adina Menzel, um, the, 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 the frozen lady from Broadway, she's in this film, and, and just as an aside, I know she's a Broadway actress. I, I know she killed it in that stuff. But she has a very expressive face. Big features, very larger than life presence going on. And it's probably because up on stage, you, you have to kind of overperform. It doesn't translate one to one. So anytime she shows up and she's reacting to things, it's always like, It's a bit much. Anyway, she's looking at a dress her daughter wants and she says, honey, I don't think we can afford this. It's more than our house. And at that point I turned to my wife and I said, so it's more than $3 million? <laughs> we have fun. Subscribe. Short story shorter, the relationship falls to pieces when we find out both girls like the same boy. They both have a little crush. Uh, well, maybe more than a little crush. They're, they're doing some pretty extreme things for his attention such as sending him very scantily clad photos, going to the retirement home where his grandma currently resides, and even going as far as editing together a video montage of the friend looking like a complete tool in front of their peers to shame them and to win the affection of the boy. It's a sad state of affairs in this movie. Uh, no one's likable, even though even the main protagonist is so self-absorbed, such a kind of complete pile of shit throughout the whole thing that I just don't even know what we're doing here. End of the day, what are we getting out of this? Well, we're getting another Netflix film. Pretty half-assed production values. We're gonna see a lot of humor that isn't funny. And we're gonna see a life lesson that didn't need to be taught because I've seen it a thousand times from Disney movies told far better. Not, not modern Disney, but older Disney movies before they sold their souls and just remade everything. If you're thinking about watching this movie with your daughter as some sort of a bonding experience, or if you're a teenager thinking of watching this yourself, the kind of humor you're gonna get here is mainly revolving around periods. There's a lot of, a lot of period jokes. I feel like the book was maybe more in touch. I haven't read it, so I guess I don't know, but it feels like producer Adam Sandler Sandlerized it. I got daughters, what do they like? Olivia Rodrigo, of course, Dua Lipa. We're gonna make several references to those two and then they also get their periods. So I'm gonna make period jokes and that's gonna be enough. That, that shows that I'm in touch, I get it. This is not Bridesmaids. This is not Mean Girls. This isn't even 2016's Ghostbusters. This misses every single mark imaginable. I had chuckled one time, a single chuckle elicited from my stomach through my mouth cavity. And it was when the daughter walked by an old lady who asked for a book. And she's just like, eh, not now. That was it. It, it, was, it was just so sad that, that that's the only thing that got me to laugh. My wife even turned to me. She's like, seriously, that that's the one that hit for you? I was desperate. Cards on the table, I gave up on Adam Sandler comedies a long time ago. They just don't work for me anymore. If they still work for you, that's that's great. Uh, you'll probably enjoy this, I guess. But I only watched this because my wife, once again, got sucked in by the influencers online, by social media. And they were saying, this movie's great. It has 90 some percent on Rotten Tomatoes. People are loving this movie. It's a must watch. I had not heard of it. I didn't even know it existed. But I gave it a shot based on that alone. I'm like, okay, well, maybe this time they're, they're honest. Maybe this time it, it's for reals. It was not. It was not for reals. Certainly wasn't for laughs either. Well, those are my thoughts and you are so not invited to my bat mitzvah. I wish I didn't crash that party in the first place. I would have stayed ignorantly blissful in my own world, but I suffered through it, so I thought I better warn people what to expect. Let me know if you watched this steamy turd in the comments below. Maybe you thought, Adam, you are completely out of your mind. This was a gem. This was a beautiful film. It had heart, it had messaging, it was on point, and it was funny. I'd love to hear it. I would absolutely love to hear that. Like the video if you had a good time. Again, please subscribe if you haven't. I post lots of movie commentary, reviews, movie roasts, and occasionally I like something. I just posted a review earlier of a film that I like, so check that out if you want, and hopefully I catch you next time. Take care.